Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. Well, I'm at another Corvette event. This is a Cars and Crosby, Cars and Coffee, Corvette extravaganza day. I'm here at our local event. This is our Crown Corvette show for the Corvettes of Southwestern Ontario. I'm gonna give you guys a tour of what I see is cool on the lot here with all the people that are, are coming from all around uh, the province. And then I'm also gonna do a little bit of a lot update and some things that are around the dealership. So the first part of this episode is gonna be here at the show. And then for the second part, we're gonna go back to my lot. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Enjoy. <music> All right, it's already about half an hour into the show and I think that we already have almost a full lot. Now, if you guys can see down here, this whole lot is full. I'm gonna be just cruising around, doing a hot one take like I normally do. So as we go through the lot, we'll see some cool stuff I'm gonna point it out. First thing I wanted to talk about is this rapid blue Corvette here. This was at the Bayfield Vet Fest, but I couldn't shoot it because there was a lot of music and people around it. And for copyright things, if there's a song from Shania Twain or Rolling Stones on it, it's not gonna let me post it because those guys wanna make sure that you have to pay for their music. And so indirectly, that's one of the reasons why I didn't feature it. And I wanna talk about this because it's a great cause. If you guys are looking at trying to win a Corvette, there's a similar program that you can do at the National Corvette Museum where you buy tickets and you can win this Corvette. This Corvette is valued at around 93K Canadian and it goes to a great cause. I believe it's the Coping Center that's doing this. Miss, if I don't mind interrupting you, what, what is the cause that this is for again? This is for the Coping Center. The Coping Center, that was, I was right. I was on the money with that. How many tickets have you guys sold so far? We sold about uh, 13,000. Okay. 10,000 tickets. So it's a set amount of tickets for this. 23,000 tickets and that's it. And we're two thirds of the way there with this rapid blue. Let's go through and pick apart what we got here. This is a Z51 coupe. It has a body color to match accent spoiler on here. It's rapid blue as we were talking about. We've got no engine appearance package and we've got the regular exhaust. This might be a 23. No, this is a 20, this is a 22. We got a jet black interior in here. It looks like it is a 1LT interior on this. Very nice, very cool. Well, hopefully someone wins this from our show today. Maybe we'll know. How often do you guys tell people where the where the winner is from or what show? We do it live on Facebook November 19th. November 19th, 10,000 tickets to go, guys. All right, well, there's my girl. I have a new set of wheels on her. I haven't featured them yet. I think this is a good time to talk about them. This is the HF7s from Vossen. And I'm hoping to find a ZR1 from the C6 generation here. If I do, we'll do a comparison because this is what I think that they look like the most. This has got a very ZR1 C6 replica-ish um, style to it. This is a brand new set that they just came out with. And I'm really excited about them. They do look well on my vehicle. I am not excited about cleaning them though. If you were gonna get a set of wheels like this, I highly suggest that you get a Christmas tree brush because it'll help out in being able to get into all these intricate little spoke areas. All right, that didn't take me long. I found them. This is the spoke pattern that I'm talking about. These, in my opinion, look as close as you can get to the HF7s. And also, as I look at it, the C7 Z06 wheels are very similar as well. Um, so if you're asking for a reference on why I think the HF7s look like a ZR1 wheel, this is the wheel in question that I'm talking about. All right, guys, I think what we should do is just start from the back and work our way up. There is at least 50 to 60 Corvettes in here, a good haul to be able to go through and feature. And I think what we'll do is just a hot take. So we got uh, a nice C4. It looks similar to the uh, ZR1 that I had actually uh, delivered in terms of having the red on black interior. It's not a ZR1, at least it's not badge like one. I don't know a lot about these in particular, but I, I gotta tell you, wow, look at the wood trim inside of this. I don't know if that's original or not, but that looks cool. Look at these two-tone seats as well. Oh, wow, this is a cool car. I'm digging it. Very nice, very nice. Uh, C4s, again, I don't know a lot about them, but this one's got some style to it and I'm digging it. This is, I think the color is called Pewter. For this one, this is a C5 that we have here. And then we have an original, oh, we've already talked about this one before. This is one of the first edition Corvettes. Remember I was uh, talking about this at VetFest in terms of it being one of the first 500 
of the C4 is built and it is woodland or um, brownstone metallic. It's brownstone metallic for the inside. I was wondering if that was the name. The gentleman that owns this reached out to me and confirmed that this is brownstone metallic. And as I look at this, it actually looks like there might be Kalahari as the stitching color on there, which is kind of cool because that's the color that replaced brownstone metallic. We'll see Kalahari on a C7 up top there. I know that there's one up there. We got ourselves a nice polar bear over here. That's what I call those ones. A 50th in that kooky color. I think it's called 50th anniversary uh, red is the name of the color. Nice headrests in here that are embroidered. We got a cool uh, shifter on there as well and with a manual transmission. Very nicely done for a golden year Corvette. Liking it all around. And then we got ourselves a rapid blue in sky cool gray. This looks like it is a 2LT with the GT1 seats. I actually don't mind it with the sky cool gray and the GT1 seats because you get a lot more of that white standing through and I think that a blue on white combination, in my opinion, is a really cool look. You know, it gives me a very Miami Vice-esque kind of style. I know that this is in Northern uh, Hemisphere in terms of it being around the 39th parallel. So we're nowhere even close to Miami, but this thing looks like it was right out of a Miami Vice film, in my opinion. High wing spoiler goes with the color. It's vibrant, it's energetic, and I think that the high wing really does a good job on the on the paint. That's something that I have never really talked a lot about on my channel. You know, when you when you choose the color, I always talk about that as being one of the most important things when you're designing your Corvette. It really sets the tone for what you're trying to do. And as I just walk through down here, I'm gonna kind of give you an example of what I mean with that. Well, with torch red or, or any kind of red, you've got a very sporty, vibrant style that you can use contrasts of chrome and black very easily. And this is a good example of someone that's been modifying and doing some beautiful paint work. Look at this. This thing's ready to go deer hunting. Holy cow, that's beautiful. Very, very cool. Wow, look at the exhaust on this, like a Callaway. Maybe this is a Callaway. Callaways used to have a crazy exhaust like that in the bottom. Now here is a really, really cool example of a rare color and how it can set the tone. This is a 650 horsepower monster, but it is in black rose metallic, which is one of the rarest colors that you can get for a Corvette. This was, I believe, a one, if not a two year color. And I absolutely love it. This is a prime example of buying a color that was not popular when it was first ordered or when it was first for sale, but there is now a cult following and, uh, it's definitely gone up in value and I hate to say it, but there's certain options that you can purchase that will actually change the value of your vehicle. And without a doubt, black rose metallic is one of those colors. This is a wild color in terms of metal flake. It's very, very low production. I'm talking like maybe 500 a year. And to see this in a Z06 is even rarer. And you know, I'm just talking about colors setting the tone for what you're trying to do. You would never think that this is a 650 horsepower monster when you look at it in that kind of color. It's very subtle. This is a similar kind of nature color to what I have on mine, which is ceramic matrix gray, where, you know, it's more style and subtle than, than anything instead of something like this, where you've got camo and something that looks like it's out of an AC Cobra on the back here. So that when you're doing your jumps, it doesn't flip over, I guess. But here's a, you know, a really good contrast in terms of demeanor and fit and finish. And it's also on a rare color that I haven't featured on the channel yet. So this, this is black rose metallic guys, and it is a really cool color. All right, I, I don't know a lot about this color. This is an L82 with a cute pinstripe on here. Nice little accent done to this. Again, color fits the tone. You know, you got here um, a C7. Actually, this is one that we just sold. This was in our showroom, not only like, like maybe two weeks ago. I know that for a fact because it has the spoiler that I was talking about where it was a little wider than the rest of the body because it's actually from a Z06. Very cool. We got some Star Wars references on this one here. We got a light speed. Again, another reference for the uh, license plates like we did in the Bayfield Vet Fest one. That's a very cool fitting license plate for a black uh, accented Z07. So this is a Z07. We can tell right away because of the wicker bill. He's also got a cool decal on there with a dragon. That's kind of interesting. Tornado Tom, very cool. Nice accents with pinstripes. I like how he's matched his calipers with the full length rocker panels and the accents on there. 
you know, kind of tying it in with the adrenaline red accents that he has on his interior. This guy has been doing his research. He thought this out before he started slapping on decals and you can see it in the detail here. That might even be a pinstripe that he's done instead of a decal. Very nicely done. I think I'm getting into the habit of doing these reviews a little too quick and I'm going to slow down on this one because Tornado Tom is here and he's going to go over this Corvette a little bit more in detail with me now. So I did ask Tom some things and this is a vinyl which it looks very sharp. He's done a very good job of that. He says he did it himself which is very good. And um, he's also changed the tires which is something that we talked about a lot um, last time we did a car tour or car show uh, where we were going through vehicles. And this here is a Continental Extreme Contact. From a price point perspective, this is actually probably one of the most cost-effective tires that you can put on these vehicles. They are at about a price point of about two to three hundred dollars less than a Michelin tire. But the big reason why somebody would do this is actually because it has a better ride. Now, with this being a Z07, it actually has an even stiffer suspension than a real Z06 would. And so with it also coming with a cup two tire, you're getting you know, a double whammy in terms of the ride and the comfort on this vehicle. So by putting this extreme contact, which is a non run flat or a black wall as we call it, or a tubeless, this is gonna give it even more sidewall and cushion for your ride. So that'll kind of counteract the Z07 and make this ride more like a Z06. So just to summarize on this one, guys, we've got a very cool Star Wars reference. We've got some nice pinstripes that go with your red accents on your six piston Brembos on the inside with the adrenaline red interior as well. We've taken the Cup 2 racing slick tires that are on here and we've put a non run flat to be able to counteract the aggressive suspension that's done through a Z07. And we've got ourselves a very cool sporty cruiser. Congrats, Tom. All right, I'll bite. They just fired this back up and I'm gonna come back and take a look at this. Wow, we got some three-piece wheels here, it looks like. They're nice Ford set. We've got ourselves a Magnuson Super. How much boost you got going through this thing? How much? Boost on the on the Super there the you go. The LS2 that originally was in it. it was so is this a three feet. now underneath here? It's a seven. Oh, you got an LS7 in there? Yeah. No way. Oh, that, okay. Well, that obviously makes sense why it's a 427. So, so you I took a Z06. A really... What is this originally? Uh, just an ordinary. Oh, oh five, oh seven, oh six, oh six. So on oh seven guys, or I think it was an oh seven. They went from the LS2 to the LS3. The LS2 had about 400 horsepower and it was a very similar block to a truck engine. The only difference was that this was an aluminum block originally and the truck engine was a cast iron block. The LS7, in my opinion, is probably one of the granddaddies of Corvette engines. It's the 427, as everyone knows. And uh, so it's a seven liter displacement engine that you've slapped on some headers and a Magnuson supercharger. Well, it ended up that they, uh, they took the LS2 out originally and put in, uh, they had the, an LS7 aluminum block, long block from GM, and yep. built it up, put it on a dyno and it, it drained it, it blew up. So what he's referencing is a very common issue with the LF7s. The, the valves in them and the lifters would blow. And so one of the things that I do when I'm evaluating an LS7 is I immediately go to look and see if it has a warranty block claim. And I don't even want to try to throw out a ratio of how many, but it was very common. Unfortunately, it was high. He's going to say it. I'm not. I'm all sunshine and rainbows. But it was very high. And so this has actually turned into a really great story. So you've taken a situation that was unfortunate and you've turned this into an awesome Frankenstein monster of a vehicle. Yeah, wow, that's a cool story. Very cool, man. Now, when I got it, they had, because it blew up, they, the owner at that time got nervous. So he put the LS2 back in and okay. put all the goodies on top of it. I see. So when I bought it 10 years And later, then you slapped the 7 underneath. Well, good but i decided to change the oil and i cut the filter apart and there's yellow flakes in the filter uh-oh uh-oh now what do i do i couldn't get the badging off with a nice paint job yeah this is a beautiful paint job so is this airbrushed or is this a decal no that's actually painted but it's wet paint with saran wrap rolled on it that's interesting it, it does the trick for me i like it there's a lot of things on this this is a meal man the more i look at this car the more meals i get so then i uh, decided to spend the money and and matched up to the 427 again yeah so i hunted around so it's a cast iron dark block in there very cool very interesting so what do you think you're pushing to the rear wheels with this 770 770 yeah. good for you that's a really cool yeah, set of wheels in the back too went from 13 pounds to seven i left it the same okay so you uh, left the pulley at the same 
You got yourself a rocket ship here. Congratulations. And it's almost got the Callaway kind of style exhaust on the back. I really like that. The gentleman I got it from was a NASCAR guy. Yeah. So he said, well, just I'll put some fancy exhaust on it. Looks, it looks it. sharp. I really like it. And every time I look at a different angle on this, I'm finding something new. You got yourself a meal, man. That's really cool. All right, I found another anniversary edition. We got ourselves a silver here. Probably my favorite badge out of all the anniversaries would have to be the silver. This, in my opinion, is a really cool car. This, and it looks like Dale Earnhardt's special, you know, in terms of it being a number three edition. <sighs> this is a nice car. Look at the leather in this thing. This has all been redone. Very beautiful interior inside of this. I don't know enough about these to make a comment on what is original and what has been redone by the owner, but uh, I highly doubt that that is from the factory. If it is, then I'll have to eat my words on that, but this is a very clean car. Again, pinstriping is maybe another theme of this episode that we're gonna talk about. This thing's been accented in a very tasteful way. You got the red from the logo in here. That That is a cool logo. I really wish that they would have ran with the the logo is a little bit more than they have recently in terms of just taking the twin flags and putting a date inside of it. So recently what they've been doing in these anniversary editions is just putting a date in there. So the 65th and the 70th kind of followed in that suit. I think the 50th also did as well. I wish that they came up with custom badges like that because that is, you know, honestly, I would even wear this as a necklace. This is a nice piece of hardware you got here. If anyone has a 25th anniversary badge laying around, I would be interested. I bet you, you know what? As I'm talking, I'm thinking out loud here, I bet you I could find one of those at Carlisle and I'm gonna look for one. You see me at Carlisle, show me some anniversary badges. That is my new thing. I wanna find as many anniversary badges as possible. All right, pinstriping, we got more here. Look at this, guys. This is kind of cool. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, Yas Mighty, Yas Mighty Sam. I know that that's a guy that's in this area that is very well known for pinstriping. I don't know enough about him to, to go on a rant right now, but if I run into um, somebody that, that knows more about this Yasmite Sam, I see him signed a lot of stuff in, in this area and I know for a fact that he's local. So um, I'm gonna go into more detail about that when I find out, but I, I, I'm I digging it, man. I think the pinstriping is fun. And we got some side pipes on this thing. Jeez Louise. And the wood trim. Look at that, Cadillac on the inside. Hot rod on the outside with some pinstripes. This is kind of fun. This is very interesting. Wow, another Connell Extreme Contact on there. So we, we got deer whistles, pinstripes, wood grain interior, and side pipes on a C4 with an awesome spoiler. This is wild, guys. I'm really enjoying this car. Very cool. We got a plaque in here. What is this? Oh, uh, it's just the gentleman that owns it, I believe, and, and some photos of him in his car. How cool is that? That looks to me like it might be aftermarket. I don't think that that would have been from the factory, but I might be mistaken. Nice aftermarket touch that a lot of people do to their C5 and 6s. There's a little kind of area in between the exhaust tips that people put a plaque. As you can see, some tasteful examples with this being a 50th. And then over here, it having a horsepower output and it being a Z06. We got ourselves the crazy, I don't even know what to call this thing. This is what was beside me at Bayfield Vet Fest. And I actually ended up having a chat with this gentleman. It's got seven pounds of boost and it's a wild child. This is a really crazy car and I love the, I love everything about this thing. It's, it's pretty crazy. This is a 350 underneath it. And um, yeah, she kicks like a mule. All right, some old friends here. We got Night Race Blue Metallic looking absolutely gorgeous with Kalahari, which is another color that we had after the one over there, which was in Brownstone Metallic. This looks like it is an original C7 Blue. This is Laguna Seca Blue on Adrenaline Red, very Superman-esque. Love on the convertibles, how on the waterfall there, they got the nice corvette badge looks good and sharp this is a round bottom you can also tell so this is a 15. if you guys are wanting to know when they say what your tonneaus are this is the tonneau insert on a c7 so this can be done in either carbon fiber or it can be done in carbon flash metallic so that is the option if you're trying to figure out what they're talking about when they're talking about your tonneau on your c7 convertible 
it's that accent right there. Because a lot of people are like, why, why does it say this on my window sticker about this tonneau? Is I don't have a pickup truck. Well, that is your tonneau on there. And then we weren't to our fancy pants word when we go to the convertible on the C8 that now we now have nacelles. So that would be the other word over there. On a C8 we have over here, I don't think I'm gonna get that much closer because um, the, the music, it's just gonna be trademarked if I go over there, but there was a C8R in Arctic white. Some R's, a pirate car. All right, let's see what we got over Sorry, here. Sorry, guys, we had a loud announcement. I wanted to cut it short. All right, so colors set the tone for themes. That's, that's the theme of this episode. And back in the corner here, we've got ourselves an Accelerate Corvette. And this is something that we can talk about for quite some time. There's a lot to unpack on this. Really nice license plate. I don't understand what the fridge reference is off the top of my head, but maybe once we find out from the owner, maybe there's some story behind it. So I can already tell that this is a 23 because it has a set of black tips on it. And this is Accelerate Yellow, guys. This is a color that we've had since the beginning of the CA generation. It's very low numbers, and it's a body color to match Z51. So we've got all the outlet vents that are on here. That is from the body color to match option. So you'll see here your boomerang inserts and all of your um, other accents will be done in carbon flash italic. That has been canceled out with an option that you can pay for. And then for the Z51 package, this comes free to have it body colored match. You can pay 220 bucks Canadian and have the mirrors and the spoiler painted black. But obviously with his theme being accelerate yellow all the way, you can see why he did not do that option. Now we've got edge red or edge yellow for the calipers on here. This is a Ford set, another 23 model year option. And we got ourselves a 3LT because this has got the yellow accents. And oh, yep, he definitely did it all the way. He's got himself the seatbelts to go with it. It smells beautiful in here. It's, it smells like I would. I wish my Corvette still smelled like. And the motion sensors work on it. That's hilarious. Oh, that must be the owner right there. And he's got he's got the yellow accents to go with it. So if you're wondering what just happened, this is a 3LT. Anything that's a 2 or a 3LT and above is going to have motion sensors on it so that people like me don't get in the way of his heart being just there all peaceful. Now, as I'm looking at this, there's one thing that I want to talk about that's a really cool upgrade that a lot of people are doing. And that is accenting the Team Corvette thing here. It, I saw it on the forums and on the Facebook pages. And... Earlier, I saw it on this one as well. This is a rapid blue, and he's done the exact same thing. See how cool that is to accent it with the rapid blue there to make it kind of come through? So on your windshield, you're gonna have the Team Corvette thing that's done through the glass, but what you can do is you can get the paint swatch to your color, and you can put it behind your dash, and then it will shine through in the color of your vehicle. I think pound for pound, that is one of the coolest upgrades that you can do to your vehicle. Now, every color has a paint coat. And so if you wanna to go to your local dealership and they don't have your color swatch on the actual um, thing that you can buy from them, you can go to any body shop and give them the paint coat to your car. And then they can you know, spray paint a, a piece of paper or something like that. And then you'll have the exact color to your vehicle that you can then slide underneath the dash in between the window and get that really cool accent. So this is one of the first times that I've seen this in public. And it goes with it because everything on this vehicle is done in yellow and he's done it right. All right, guys. Tickets are being drawn for prizes here. We got ourselves a nice Z06 over here. What do we got? This gentleman's wanted to show us some stuff. What do you got? Oh, the Nufi C8 in the color like mine. Nice contrast on here. Very nicely done. We got ourselves a 22, 22 model year. 22. 22 model a year in carbon flash metallic as you know it's a very nice color i'm very jealous that i i uh did not do the sky cool gray interior on mine but with the amount of people that are in my corvette um i just didn't want to do it because i knew that it would be high high traffic but this is a gt1 seat and i actually really enjoy the gt1 seat when it's done in sky cool gray because you got a lot of that nice contrast coming through with the mulan leather so the gt1 seats are done in mulan leather and this is the same leather that was done on the C7s, which is right over here. So that's a Mulan leather interior. This one's got some signatures and some add-ons to the, uh, the, the tires over here. Another rare color beside it. This is Night Race Blue, like we saw over there. And he's got full-length rocker panels on it, an ACS composite front splitter with the little winglets done to it as well. Got some nice, funny stickers to go with it. Some signatures, which I don't recognize on the top here. 
on the header block. That's that's interesting. Manual transmission, he's doing it right with his Z51. There's a nice tasteful upgrade done to the inside as well with the bottom of his flat bottom steering wheel having a nice little insert. Got the Moss Sport outlines on here. Transparent top, didn't notice that before. And then we've got a contrasting carbon flash Z51 spoiler, some diffusers back here. Very nicely done, man. And in, in a rare color too, very nice. But this is my this is my color. This is my jam. And you've accented it with a dual indie racing stripe. So you've really done a good job at, at breaking up our color. I'm gonna say our color because we don't have a lot. And as I say that behind us, there's actually a ceramic C7. Uh, wow, this is turning into a little miniature ceramic. So what I was just saying on camera about your car is, I wish I did this sky cool gray mm -hmm. because I actually really like the contrast. Yeah. And what you've done with your car is you've kind of done a yin and yang. So on the outside, you've got a lot of the um, color because obviously that's the exterior, but you've broken it up with the accents through the dual Indy racing straight and your hash marks. These look like these were done aftermarket, aftermarket. a little bit thinner, which I actually appreciate. It's a little bit nicer and thinner than what it would be from the factory. And then when we look on the inside, we've got the yin and the yang. So as you can see here, we've got the majority of it being done in jet black, but then we've got the accents being done in sky cool gray, which is as close as it gets to being ceramic matrix gray on the outside. So if you guys can see what I mean by that, you've got a contrast between the outside and the inside in terms of having a heavy black with a white accent on the inside and then a ceramic white exterior. I call it white, I know it's gray. And then you're having it accented in carbon flash metallic. So very nicely done. I'm impressed. Very cool. We got ourselves a two LT. Is this a Z51? Z51 as well. We got the black accents on the spoiler in the mirror. That's one pound for pound, one of the most cost effective options that you can do for your um, your vehicle. And it's a $220 option to paint those mirrors and spoiler. And I think it's done all the way. So this is ST1. This is the composite extensions that you can get as an LPO accessory from the factory. We've got the original. Um, tw uh, split spoke wheels done in carbon flash metallic. Again, another reason why you get black wheels because when you get brake dust on there, you can't see it because these things are meant to be driven. Now, I was just actually, this is a cool suggestion if you're interested. Go take a look at the Accelerate Yellow and Rapid Blue Corvette. Mm -hmm. They've put a piece of white or the color of their vehicle in here so that this then turns white as well. Okay. So put a white piece of paper or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. and then this will then yeah. complement it, yeah. which will just continue with that theme. What am I looking at now? So this was done at auto trim. Okay, yeah, auto trim design. That's where I did my just married thing on the back of my thing when yeah. I took it on. Look what they did here. One piece, one piece, one piece. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is all PPF underneath it. No way. Okay, so this is... You, you got me there, man. We're going to go on for a little bit longer on this one now. So what he is talking about is the fact that he's got the decals underneath the PPF. So... They're done in three separate pieces. So if they wrap the factory decals, you get the lines, mm -hmm. you get the different sheen from the rest of the car. Yeah. That's why they cut them in three pieces. So this is one piece, two piece, three pieces, and they're flush. That's pretty wild, man. I didn't even pick up on that. Thank you for bringing that up. So you guys get what he means there. So there's actually, um, what, so then this would be basically the PPF then would be this decal part here. No, the decal is not PPF. This is PPF. This is PPF, this is PPF. The and it looks very rocker, clean. The lights and the rocker is right down to the back wheels. Oh, you did to the back wheels as well. So you even did your hips and stuff on this. So when, whenever I'm going around a vehicle and I'm appraising it, I'll do this with my nails to try to see if my nails dig into it. Goes here, okay. all the way down. Anywhere that it's sticking out is it obviously, and then he's done the door sills, which is an, an option that I did on mine. That pays itself in dividends when you do that kind of stuff. That's an investment that will pay for itself over the course of the time. How many kilometers do you have? Yeah, the, 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 the rock guards. 4,500. 4,500, because this is a uh, a 22. That's a healthy amount for, for it being probably... Oh, in May of last year, right? Oh, this year. Okay, so that makes... So you have been driving this. Have you gone back to the native land yet? Well, you couldn't actually drive there, would you? You'd have to fly. I wouldn't drive this Would you ferry it there? I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive it down there. The roads would the be too... Terrible. Really? Every time my wife and I go home, my cycle's home. So we've driven to the East Coast, but not, not on a C8. Um, that's really wild. Because I was just in Halifax, and the roads there were... I'd drive to Halifax, but not beyond that. Not beyond that? I'd drive it New Brunswick. Because New Brunswick was pretty wild. I liked the roads there. The PEI was pretty decent when we were out there. But Newfoundland is a no-go for the Newfie C8. 
Well, this is really great. I appreciate you uh, showing this to me, man. And, and and next time I see you at the dealership, make sure you say hi. See you around, guys. Well, that is awesome. Auto Trim Design in London, Ontario is doing something that I've never heard of before, and I should have because that was a very smart idea. Um, if you guys are looking at PPFing your vehicle, it is a solid investment. You should always look at trying to do that if you're going to be doing some track stuff. There is one of my old favorites right over there in ceramic matrix gray uh, for the C7. So we got a C7 in ceramic. This looks like it's an old friend from my dealership as well that I, I sold. This is nickname is Tangy because she's tangerine or uh, Sebring orange, which is kind of fun. And then we've got ourselves an adrenaline red on torch red C8 convertible here, which is nicely accented. As you can see, there's a bunch of different reds and they've done a really good job at kind of making them almost the exact same kind of color, but a little bit different. I think that that is, in my opinion, as close as it gets. And I, I think it looks good. I haven't seen yet an adrenaline red dipped interior. I really, I really do want to see one. I'm not trying to, you know, say, go out there and do that and show me, but I'm hoping that at Carlisle, I get to see at least one torch red on adrenaline red, just to see what a sea of red looks like. Cause, uh, this is as red as it gets, in my opinion, you know, with having the Z51 spoilers, he could have done the body color to match like that accelerate yellow guy did over there. But, um, this is as, as red as it gets in terms of a, a, an interior that, for this model year, because now with the 23s, you can do a dipped version but uh, very nicely done. Beautiful, nice blue sting right here. An old friend of the channel. We got ourselves a manual ceramic matrix gray C7. Very, very cool, clean, slick car. Debadged, love that. We got ourselves Sebring Orange Z06. And the top end of the hood here has got a Jake logo, which I quite enjoy as well. Very racy kind of style decal. Got ourselves a 65 and a nice blue. I think it's the same blue as that one over there. It's a very common blue. And oh, we got ourselves another old friend of the channel here. This is silver flare metallic. So another rare color that I have not seen that often. And I enjoy it because, well, the name is a pun in itself. So I, I kind of enjoy that. If you guys take a look in the sun directly, you'll see that it has some orangey gold metal flakes in it like a flare from the sun. So silver flare metallic. And it's also when I'm changing around has a lot of travel in the paint that really does a good job at accentuating the lines and making it look different depending on where the light is. Now, the other thing I really like about this build that we did are these Vossen wheels. These are a machined face wheel. And in my opinion, it just goes with the sleek color of this in terms of it having just an absolutely gorgeous metal, crisp clean look that looks like it's from you know something that's very space age it looks like it's made out of a lot of beautiful fine materials and it's well it obviously is but it just really accentuates that you know you see in a lot of wheels and stuff like that they're just in a painted finish and not to rip on any of these people's wheels here but when they're done in a machine face you really get a sense of the quality and the precision that's done on this product now we've also got a little bit of a breakup in the um paint here with this sterling silver dual Indy racing stripes, the chrome badging on here. It is a Z51 with a four post high, a four post high wing spoiler. And this is the strike yellow interior. This is a three LT option. It's a very rare interior. A lot of these were done on the IMSA editions. So that was where they only built a thousand of these and in either hypersonic gray or the accelerate yellow, which we saw over there. So the strike yellow is the uh, color on the bolsters and then on the stitching as well. And I just absolutely love it. This really goes together and it looks like he's almost got a special edition when you look at it as a whole, but he's made it all on his own. This is all custom done and it's a cool Corvette. All right, red mist. We've talked about this for days on the channel on a nice sunny day. It's got more depth than I've seen in a long time in a color. And uh, I really enjoy this color. This to me, is uh, a really classy color. And I like when it's accented in a subtle way with red. So as you can see, this is the least amount of red that you could accent a, a red mist uh, metallic car in. With it being a Z51, you got a little bit of red in the caliper. You got a little bit of red in the twin flag logo on the wheel caps and also in the center twin flags logo. And then with this being a 3LT, you have the red stitching, which is the only red accent 
on the inside of here, other than I guess your seatbelt uh, little notch. And then we've got edge red for the engine cover. But this is a custom engine cover actually, guys. Uh, that is different, I haven't seen that yet. I don't know who owns this Corvette, but let me see if I can try to find out who owns it. Can you open up the rear deck lid? You've got a custom uh, LT2 engine cover. Nice shirt, that's a very cool shirt as well. Yeah, I got it at uh, Corvette Mods. Corvette Mods? Yeah. So is it hydro dipped or is it painted, painted. with, it's painted. It's painted. So this is tasteful guys. So this is not the edge red engine cover that you can get as an option from the factory. This is all custom done. And take a look at this guys. How cool is that? That is beautiful. So you can see here, the LT2 nameplate covers for the Corvette have also been painted and lo looks like a sterling silver. They've painted all the inlets to the Twin Flags logo in black. And it goes with the valve covers as well. So just take yeah, a look at I, that, guys. I, I love that is a cool modification. I have not seen that yet, and I'm really glad that I did and that I found the owner because we're talking about tasteful amount of red. You don't want to overdo it when you have a very beautiful red color on the outside. This has been tastefully done. You get a little bit of the subtle tone in here. You got a lot of black on the back area here. And then you've got a beautiful, shiny LT2 cover on here as well. All right, guys. Well, I think this episode has been well done. 50-50 tickets are being drawn soon. We talked about these wheels being uh, a replica to my... You know what? Let's talk about this one for a second. We haven't talked about a ZR1 from the C6. And I saw a couple of comments on uh, the channel from the Bayfield show about how uh, we didn't talk about the C6 ZR1 at all. So this is an LS9. And this is the window that I was talking about that we should try to get done to the hardtop convertible when it's in the car show kind of mode format. So the people were speaking about this specific hardtop deck here and turning this area right here into an acrylic cover so that you can see the engine like they did on the LS9 in the C6 ZR1. These things are, I absolutely love them. One of my favorite colors that's on this ZR1 is this brake caliper. It is uh, called Devil Blue. And that's a color that, um, in my opinion, it would have been really fun if they, if they turned it into an exterior color on the vehicles. You know, I guess the closest one would be probably Elkhart Lake Blue which is right over there if you haven't got your 50 50 ticket they're doing they're doing their last draws for that this this engine is a torque monster and it's i always jokingly reference like a uh, a star wars reference when the millennium falcon kind of goes into hyperdrive uh oh sold out for the 50 50 guys <laughs> jeez we'll just wait for him to finish up for a second and we'll finish my reference so the LS9 here is a torque mo monster. I think it's 636, it's in the small 600s for, for power. Oh geez, two extra minutes, guys. I might have to do a retake if he keeps interrupting. This thing has a ton of torque. This is an Eaton supercharger, so it's a very similar relative on the supercharger side to what you had in over here with the LT4. They're, they're relatives, they're distant relatives, but the block underneath it is obviously completely different. There's a lot of um, more technology and computers in particular that are going from here to here. The biggest claim to fame with the C6 ZR1 was this was the first vehicle that had magnetic ride control. And you can kind of see in there the ride selector like you have on the C7s and the C8s. This was the first vehicle that we developed that had a magnetic ride control system with performance traction management. So because this Eaton supercharger is an absolute torque monster to the rear wheels, they had to devise a system that would help out in being able to put that power down. And so what they did is they, they added to the magnetic ride control system and they made a system called performance traction management. And what this did is it added a couple chapters to the book in terms of what you can do with your car in certain applications. So if you guys 
are just following along. This is your magnetic ride control system right here. It's a system that is involving a magnetic heracological fluid being in the shocks that you put a current through. This current changes in a nanosecond because it's electricity and it can read the road about a thousand times a second. This is the second generation, this is the third generation, and in the C8 it is the fourth generation of magnetic ride control. The whole goal of this is to have a big book of all these different applications. And when you have that magnetic ride control system in here and you change it to a different mode, you're moving the book to a certain chapter and it's allowing the Corvette to deduce what is going on a lot faster. So if you guys are losing traction and you're in weather mode, it's gonna make the assumption that you're hydroplaning over doing a drift if you were in race mode. With this thing having so much torque, they added the performance traction management system to basically add a couple of chapters specifically for having uh, track applications. So this was really made to be able to, 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 be able to handle a lot more um, performance orientated items and, and, and situations with that ride control system. So that's something that I'm very proud of. The lineage on it for that system started on this specific model. It was worked on with this one and we perfected it on that one. And uh, that is your claim to fame with the ZR1 from the sixth generation. All right, guys, it's starting to rain, so I am going to head out. But this was really a great success. I hope you guys enjoyed this theme of uh, colors, setting the tone, pinstripes, and just overall pointing out a lot of cool builds that are here in London, Ontario at the Corvettes of Southwestern Ontario. So let's, uh, let's call it a day on this episode. It's getting a little longer than I anticipated because of all the cool things that I saw. And I'll do a separate episode with production updates and all the details that are going on at the dealership in a couple of days. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Stay tuned for more awesome content. Carlisle is going to be the next event that I go to near the end of the month. I will be a celebrity judge there. Make sure you see me. If you see any of those commemorative badges, make sure to let me know because I'm going to be going to the part swap area and looking for some silver 25th in particular, maybe to get like a necklace or something like that, some hardware. Hope you guys enjoy. I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet. Stay tuned for more awesome content. Happy Motors.